What's up Average Dad fans? Welcome back to another video and another video featuring the Huawei Mate X3. Now, my camera test and all that good stuff and reviews, all that stuff's coming. However, my channel is to inform you, specifically those that want to perhaps buy a Chinese smartphone and import it, or on this occasion, buy a Huawei smartphone. So I've done Q&A videos in the past on Xiaomi's and Vivo phones imported from Wanda Mobile, link in description. However, this one is slightly different. The Huawei Mate X3 has a global ROM. So as far as your notifications and the battery saving mode and all the setting, settings that I would usually tell you about and answer your questions on, aren't really applicable. However, because it's a Huawei phone, we've got the Google nonsense. We've got the workarounds that you still have to do to make this phone like any other Android device. Now the good news is, it's all possible. To this point, I have yet to see something that isn't possible. So, without further ado, I'm going to answer your questions. So the first question slash questions come from David Lawson, you can see here. And the first one is quite a simple, straightforward one. Does the Mate X3 have an IR blaster? It does at the top here beside the speaker, dual stereo speakers. It does have an IR blaster that you can control your TV and all that from. As I've mentioned before, I've never used an IR blaster because my TV comes with a robot control. But I get it, I know it's convenient, hotels, flossy, shout out to you, super. Next question David asked was about the keyboard, can the keyboard be smaller? Yes, uh, Gboard um, can be installed, I always use the Gboard keyboard, the Gboard keyboard, obviously it rhymes because it's the same word, um, but yeah it can be smaller, the Huawei um, default keyboard can also be made smaller. Um, what the Gboard keyboard can't do is split across the left and right of the screen when unfolded, but the default Huawei keyboard can. Now the next thing you ask is 4G versus 5G. I'm going to skip this one, David, because I want to leave this to the end, okay? Because everybody keeps bringing this up and I just want to leave my thoughts to the end. So the final thing David asks is regarding flex mode. Yes, the phone has a flex mode in most apps, all stock apps, the calendar, the messaging, the camera app. The hinge on the Huawei Mate X3 is by far the best hinge I've ever seen. Look how close you can get without it closing. That's amazing. And then on the other end, you can open it quite wide until it eventually slaps. So yeah, look at that. Pretty cool, and it's solid as well. It's a solid, solid hinge mechanism. Love it. So if you're looking to take tripod pictures, um, just using your phone on like a ledge or a wall or something, you're gonna get those stunning photos without actually carrying a tripod around. You can just put it in flex mode. Super handy. Now the next one is, an answer within a question from Quetzer, I think is how you pronounce your username. Essentially, I'd mentioned in my first impressions that Huawei don't have an app drawer anymore, uh, which is frustrating because I'm so used to it on Android. Yes, I know it's not on iOS, but having an app drawer for me just makes the home screen um, much cleaner. Uh, Quetzer did say, would downloading Nova Launcher um, not help with the app drawer situation? Absolutely. So to answer the question, you can get an app drawer through Nova Launcher or other third-party launchers. And I guess answered within that as well as, can you use third-party launchers with the Huawei? You absolutely can. Um, Nova Launcher works. I have tested it. 
Uh, but ironically, I've now kind of got used to the stock launcher, so I'm just back to that one. The next question came from Troy V. And Troy, I have to apologise, I still can't answer this one. Does the phone have a glove mode? What does that mean? Sorry, I'm probably being silly here. Um, if you can tell me what that means in the comments, anybody, um, can you wear gloves with it? I don't think that's what you mean. Um, sorry, but um, no, maybe, yes, possibly. Let me know in the comments exactly what the glove mode is. However, as the second part of your previous question that I'd answered regarding insurance, um, the Huawei was bought through Huawei.com. It wasn't bought through Wanda, so there is obviously an official Huawei warranty when it comes to the device. And as far as insuring the phone, it's, it's a mobile phone. You can still insure it. So mine are all just insured through my contents insurance and actually my bank insurance, which covers a mobile phone. You just have to let them know the value of the mobile phone. Um, it has a serial number, so I'm not quite sure how you're not seeing any options to insure the Huawei. Um, yeah, so you can definitely, it's a, it's a 2,000 pound phone. I implore you to insure it. Um, there will be, Google it is probably the best thing to do um, because in the UK, you can certainly insure it through a number of ways. Um, so I would imagine you can do that in the US as well. Now, the next couple come from Cattle Catmelion. I did promise, and by the way, hopefully that's how you pronounce your name. I did promise I'd respond to your questions. So here we go. Regarding Google Contacts Calendar, um, synchronization is fairly straightforward. Now, with the Google Calendar app, you just simply download the app and sync it with your Outlook, Gmail, whatever you're syncing your calendar from. It, it, the options there, it, it will sync. Um, with your contacts, it's slightly different, What and it took me a Google search to figure this out and a forum, um, but once I did, it's super straightforward. Just go to google.com or contacts.google.com, and then in the top right-hand corner, just hit the export button. Export. This is on your phone, by the way, so on the Huawei itself. Export the contacts to vCard, then go to your contacts app, click on settings, click on import, import from vCard file, and then all your contacts are there. Super straightforward. Now, DYT75, a good question to ask for such a thin foldable device. Do you get any heating issues? No. I have been doing a lot of camera um, testing over the past day or two, and the phone has yet to run hot. I've recorded for like 15 minutes just doing random stuff to see exactly that. Is it going to get hot? I didn't want to answer this without actually testing it. And so far, even after leaving the phone plugged in for like two hours on charge, I kind of forgot about it. It only takes like half an hour to charge, but I'd left it for two hours. And even at that point, there was no heat at all. Now, Jonathan Reed. Next comment is about notifications. Again, this is a global ROM. Um, I know where you're coming from. I know you've watched a lot of my previous videos on the Vivo X Fold. The Vivo X Fold does not get always on display um, icons unless you're using like the stock nano kits and then they, they show up. But as far as the Huawei goes, yes, icons are always on display. Now with a caveat that like Instagram is a stock app from the Huawei store, so you get that. So anything stock, including apps that are in the Huawei store, like Outlook and Instagram, all those, Yahoo, icons shown always on display. Where it's different, and the only one that I don't seem to see are WhatsApp icons. And I need to double check this, but I'm pretty sure... It's just like the G-Box icon. Because the app you've downloaded is actually G-Box, I think that's the icon I see, but I need to double check that. Um, however, yes, always on display icons are there. Second question from Troy V that I'm gonna to answer today um, is about edge panels. Does the Mate X3 have an edge panel? Yes, it does. You use the edge panel uh, quite conveniently to, to get split screen apps and floating windows and all that stuff. The one thing I can't get on the Edge app though 
are non-stock apps. <sighs> okay, so to the final question slash like issue um, for people. And look, listen, I absolutely get it. I'm not going to sit here and say that there isn't a difference. There is a difference. However, when it comes to 4G and 5G, me personally, I work from home. So I'm always on Wi-Fi. If I'm out and about, I'm not looking to download 200 gigabyte files from my mobile phone. What I'm doing out and about is listening to podcasts, watching some YouTube, watching some Netflix. 4G speeds are more than capable to watch anything on your device or listen to anything on your device. And if you need to download a movie, you can do it on 4G. It'll just take a bit longer than 5G. This whole 5G debate, I, I implore you to tell me how many minutes per week do you actually use 5G? And when you're on 5G, what are you doing with it that actually contributes to your question? Again, I get it. You want to know. Lack of 5G, how does it impact? On me personally, it has zero impact. Mr. Who's the Boss also done a video on how inefficient 5G is. You literally have to be under the mass to get full 5G speeds. And woe we'll betide there's a tree or a wall in your way. So... Listen, 4G is a more efficient and widely available connection, connectivity implement device thing. You know what I'm trying to say. 5G was a waste of money, in my opinion. But again, that's a controversial hot take. No, not having 5G does not impact on my experience with the Huawei. Um, I should also say that for those that commented about the Samsung Z Fold 4, I'm just going to say that I think you're probably trolling. If you think the Z Fold 4 is a better package than the Huawei Mate X3, I'm just going to let you have it. Okay, yep, that's fine. For the one commenter that said the Honor Magic VS is a better device than the um, Huawei Mate X3 in a better package, I, I can't let that one slide. No. You have clearly never held the Huawei Mate X3. There is no comparison. Thank you very much for watching. I have many more comments and questions, but I've answered them all in the comments section. I can't make a dedicated video for every question because we'd be here forever and my retention just isn't that good. So what I have done, I've tried to compile a lot of the most frequently asked questions and I've popped them in this video. Now, if you have other questions, leave them in the comments on this video. I will get to them. And if there is enough and there are enough frequently asked ones, spit it out, um, I'll make a second follow-up video. But the next video I do on this has to be on the hardware and the cameras in particular. I am spoiler alert, blown away by the camera on the X3. Until next time, 